So another intervention that has been um, perhaps much more widely studied and, and easier to implement um, is, uh, is dietary interventions that have been shown to improve healthy aging of stem cells. So for example, caloric restriction, which is a well-conserved um, sort of rejuvenating intervention, um, has been shown to also um, enhance stem cell function with age. And so that's been shown, for example, in the muscle where calorie restriction or reducing um, the diet and overall caloric in, uh, intake in mice has been shown to increase satellite cell number and enhance muscle stem cell function. So, um, so as a consequence, uh, in these animals that have been caloric restricted, there is an increase in muscle regeneration and transplant efficiency. And so the benefits of caloric restriction are not restricted to just the muscle compartment. It's also been shown that caloric restriction can improve um, the, the functionality of hematopoietic stem cells, intestinal stem cells, and can also result in an increase in, in neurogenesis and cognitive function. Now, caloric restriction is just one dietary intervention that's been studied in this manner. Um, it's also been found that time-restricted feeding or intermittent fasting can improve stem cell function. Um, in animals, um, ketogenic diets has, have also been shown to um, improve stem cell functionality. And as I mentioned earlier, um, enhancement of certain metabolic cofactors such as NAD through treatment um, with nicotinamide riboside have also been shown to, um, to improve stem cell um, function and maintenance. And then lastly, rapamycin has been shown to, to enhance stem cell functionality. And so um, it's important to note that most of these dietary interventions have really only been tested in, um, in, in mice. And so it's unclear yet exactly how humans will benefit and whether stem cell compartments in humans um, will actually um, be improved by, um, by these interventions. But interestingly, um, these interventions have, have pretty much been shown in every case to function through the, the mechanisms that I mentioned earlier. Um, so dietary interventions in general, downregulate um, growth factor signaling, such as insulin IGF signaling and TOR activity. So, they, um, so what I mean by this is that they're impacting these nutrient sensing path pathways that I mentioned earlier. Um, it's also been shown that these dietary interventions um, result in an overall metabolic reprogramming that's healthy for the cell, um, as well as improved immune function to decrease inflammation with age. And interestingly, in recent work, it's been shown that these dietary in interventions can also um, help with the microbiome um, status. So basically confer a, a microbiome remodeling during the aging process that is um, healthy for aging. This has been a, a huge area of interest recently in the, the stem cell field. And uh, one area of interest in particular is in using IPS-based approaches to rejuvenate stem cell pools. So induced pluripotent stem cells, or IPS cells, are cells that are generated from adult somatic cells or, um, or embryonic somatic cells, um, such as, as fibroblasts. And so these somatic cells can effectively be um, reprogrammed through delivery of a number of um, transcription factors. And this was first shown by Shumi Yamanaka. And so, um, so delivery of these transcription factors causes an overall reprogramming of these somatic stem cells into an embryonic state um, known as an induced pluripotent stem cell state. So these cells are very similar to embryonic stem cells. And so that means that they actually have the capacity to differentiate into all lineages and all cell types in the organism. And what's exciting about this process is that, um, that converting a somatic stem cell to an IPS cell results in an overall epigenetic and metabolic reprogramming of the cells to a more youthful um, embryonic state. Um, and it also includes um, features of a regeneration or rejuvenation, um, such as telomere restoration. And so there's been a lot of interest in using the power of these rejuvenating factors or reprogramming factors to, um, to improve healthy aging. So for example, in, uh, in the mouse during aging, there's an accumulation of the aging hallmarks that I mentioned earlier um, that, that are well known to occur during, um, during the aging process. And delivery of certain levels of these reprogramming factors has been shown to actually epigenetically reprogram old cells into younger cells. And this actually works at least to some extent across different tissues and cell types, including uh, stem cells such as hematopoietic stem cells. Okay, so, um, so in summary, uh, I've gone over the intrinsic mechanisms 
of stem cell aging and how they're impacted by a number of extrinsic mechanisms with age. Um, but I think the really exciting take home message here is that um, based on what we know from various interventions, there is actually potential for rejuvenation of stem cell pools to enhance um, healthy aging and improve and increase the number of, um, of years that are spent on um, disease-free in humans.